My name is Martin Matter with the Witness to War Foundation. It is March 27, 2014, and we are in Hiawassee, Georgia, sitting with Mr. Vaughn Barrett, D-A-U-G-H-N-B-A-R-R-E-T-T, who served in the Pacific Theater of World War II in the United States Army, and the 544th Engineer Boat and Shore Regiment, Company D. How are you doing today, Vaughn? How are you doing? My first question is, where are you from originally? Where are you from originally? Uh, first, is here or overseas? Here. Okay, I li lived here in Iwate. And could you tell me about your life before you joined the military? Okay. Yeah, uh, well, uh, I, I was born here in Iwate in, in a farm, and uh, uh, my mother died when I was small. And uh, my father had two, uh, three kids, and I was a, was a middle one, and uh, I'd stay at home with a kid, you know, and so I didn't get any education. And, uh, but I had to plow, and we had to make all the food that we eat that year. And I had to do all the plowing in the wintertime to get ready for summertime to plant corn and other crops, you know. So then <clears throat> I went, get a little old job, but I was just a kid, and I'd just get a little old job, picked up, then anybody wanted a little work done, I'd do a little work around, you know. And the find of the CCs come in, uh, they built CC camps, and so I got old enough. I went into the CC camps, and uh, stayed till they broke up, I mean, you know, quit. And uh, sent the money, you know, we'd get, I think it's $25 a month, and they'd send $20 home and give you five. And uh, I stayed to them till they broke up, uh, done away with it, you know. Well, they got done away with that, the war started. And uh, they, it had been running a while, you know, and we, we took a rock smart a, a training in the CC camps, you know, and we knew, knew how to handle ourselves. And so they got me right quick. I could shoot a gun pretty good. <laughs> so I went to war then. Well, tell me about your training. What, what all do you remember about your training? Training, well, my training, it, it, uh, they didn't give me too much training, but uh, it was cold. I mean, you know, it was real cold. Massachusetts, you know. And they done that, and then the ship put us on a train and sent us to Florida. We took jungle training for a while, and then they put us on a train and sent us to California went on a go on a great bridge and took off to Japan. Not Japan, uh, uh, New Guinea. Could you tell me more about your jungle training and what that was like? Yeah, well, the why? Could you tell me more about the jungle training and what that was like? Oh, well, I don't you know. said you were in jungle training? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, had jungle training in Florida. And what was that like? What do you remember about that? Well, uh, <laughs> they had us a jumping in the ocean and and swimming and, and just like getting ready, carrying your guns in and all like that. And and what was the hardest part for you? Well, the hardest part was when you're going through the obstacle, you know, crawling on your stomach and through them swamps and things, and uh, going on them war fences, and that was the roughest, I mean, in the training. And then climbing them big boards, you getting off on the other side. So you went to California, and then how did you get into the Pacific? Did you take a ship? 
You took that chef into the Pacific? Well, we, we just rode the train up our steps off and, and uh, loaded up on a boat <laughs> and uh, went overseas. You, do you remember what kind of boat it was? No, I don't. Everything's blurry as Jimmy now. Well, where's the first place you remember going? The first place you went when you were on the boat? We landed New Guinea. New Guinea, that's yeah. right. Tell well, me about landing in New Guinea. Well, we just stayed there for a while. Went on the Dutch East Indian, the Dutch East Indian on the Song Island, then on into the Philippines. But they had all that cleaned out. I mean, we didn't do much on just get ready to hit the Philippines, you know. Were there still natives around when you got there? Oh yeah, there's plenty of enemies around. Uh, natives, native people from New Guinea, were they around when you got there? Well, uh, no, they, they was dug in too, you know. <laughs> we had to shoot them out, you know. They bombed them. And... When was the first time you encountered an enemy? The first time we had combat uh -huh. in the Philippines. And how how soon after you landed? Well, we when we landed, we had, we had to push them off in the Philippine island, or I mean around the ocean, till we could get off. <clears throat> and then when we could get off, I, we we went to work. I mean, on the fifties and there, we had to fix dumps. I mean, uh, places to store our ammunition, our bombs, and gas, and everything we used. We had to make places to put them in where we could camouflage them. And uh, so they, they, they guarded us. We we just under fire, you know. Uh, they guarded us and keep from hitting them. Uh, Dumps, you know, blowing them up. But so, sometimes they come over the night and try to get us, but they shoot them off. What sort of things did you do to camouflage the ammo and gas? What were we do? Yeah, what did you do to camouflage? Well, things? they had big, uh, I'd call them canvas, but they didn't have. It's all covered up, kind of like the area we was in, you know, where when we put it on, it just showed like trees and from the air down, but they couldn't hardly get it right direct on them. And how many men were in your unit working on all of this? How many men? Uh huh. Well, they, I don't know, they just scattered all over the beach from one end to the other, you know, all of us. And how close to the front lines were you? How close to the front lines were you? Well, we was right next to the ocean, what the, like the ocean, not right to the water, but anyhow, it was back from, from kind of like the edge of the woods or something, well. trees. But I remember when uh, we then we'd be at Causeways with a dozer. <coughs> We call them causes, but then they, they just ramps. We'd be able to, where the ships would come in and uh, unload their trucks. Trucks would go out this causeway they were building and pick up the stuff off the ship, bring it out to the dumps. You know. But anyhow, I was on one of the dozers that had the pan on the back of it. He'd haul that dirt. Uh, one one night or evening, I was coming out through there and the siren went off with uh, a raid coming. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we, uh, we had time to kind of take cover, but anyhow, I just dropped the pan on mine and crawled under the dozer. There was a pull in that pan and I'm way bumming and shooting and, and uh, 
that dozer on it was cut it off and it just uh, sitting out idling, you know, and there's a heavy dozer and, and that thing settled down on my back and I like to never crawl out from under that thing when the, I was all over, you know. But they strap them falling everywhere. And did any of it hit you? Pardon? Did any of the shrapnel hit you? No, I don't didn't understand you, but did any of the shrapnel hit you? No, no, no. No, I was on a little steel tractor, a big tractor. But it, it, it settled down on me, you know. It was soft dirt like. I didn't think about that, <laughs> but I thought about it the next time. How quickly were you building uh, these causeways and ammo dumps? How fast were you building things on the island? How fast? Uh -huh. It could run? I don't, I don't really know. You just threw them all on dirt on the roads. I guess that did. They were on the face, like, get them started up. But when did you uh, move off the beach in the Philippines? When did you get off the beach? Well, when we got off the beach, the Philippines went on Japan. We was fixing to hit Japan, whether they surrendered or not. We had put, they had us to put new ends on our dozers cutting ends and uh, we had to waterproof them all of our, our equipment and uh, so that was I did we was going on to the Philippines I mean to Japan and so the company moved up the beach our company that was not in the motor pool you know they moved up the beach a hundred miles and got on the ship and it was loaded up <clears throat> and we supposed a big boat supposed to come in and pick our we had 13 pieces in our squad that we worked in 13 pieces of heavy equipment and we had loaded on a boat so uh, they come in to pick us up but anyhow the, they dropped the atomic bomb, and then they wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't load it, let us load for another week. We had to stay there, oh, uh, who was that, another week, the Navy wouldn't take us up. So anyhow, they called in and told us, come on out, and so we went out, so the ship was going to load up. We had a, a back hole, we were in a crane on the truck, on a little old boat we had, so uh, the, I reckon he's the captain of the ship or something, but then he told us, he said, well, I'd like to load up the, the seat and where we can pull out in the morning. He said, but every, every one I've got that does that is out on the shore on a leave. And old Izzy, he, he in our outfit, he run a, a crane and loaded stuff in Ohio. Uh, he said, I'll load, the, load them. He said, you can't load these on us. You can't use this big crank. And he said, why? Well, he said, I wore out many a crank. And they let him have it, have it and show him. I mean, told him, said, drop it over in this hatch. And he grabbed them levers and boy, he shot them right down. <laughs> Went and he hollered and said, don't go so fast, you'll knock the bottom out of the thing. He said, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> See, he's done that time to it. And he said, I believe you can handle it all right. He said, yeah. Well, he said, I ain't got no riggers. So rig a thing up to haul it up. He said, well, yeah. I said, all oh, my men can do that too. And he said, well, let's see some of them doing it. And they, he called down there to do that. She said, we re-rigged it up. And he dropped a big... A uh, bowl runner out of there, we call it, and hooked to him, on it to him, and he eased it up a little bit and shook it. And, and so he, old guy on the ship, he said, I believe that'll hold. And he said, I know it'll hold. <laughs> he just put it over there and 
We loaded her up. So he called Edge as a boss man, you know. And uh, he called Edge to, told him to tell uh, all of us men to come in his office. We went in his office when we got up there. And he gave us all $10 a piece. <laughs> American money. We hadn't seen none in almost three years. <laughs> Hey, Lord. What all did you have to build uh, things out of? Did you have wood or were you using things from the island? Well, he just uh, donated it to us. I reckon uh, we, we, he didn't take no time. He didn't no, take, keep no time. <laughs> and this was all on Japan, correct? This was all on Japan? Yeah, what was going on in Japan then, yeah. And did you deal with any Japanese people while you were on Japan? Oh, yeah. And what do you remember about that? Well, I remember we weren't supposed to get on no train. And then no, no guy from, uh, let's, let's see, I forget now where he lived. He lived up north somewhere. And, my brother, he came over on the ship, occupation, troop, and so we was up, we just having to unload ourselves, the ship, you know, to some our occupation troops got in to where we could turn it over to them. So when they got in, well, we'd get to come back home. So uh, we were, me and old James Short, we thought would. He said, "I'd like to go see you, brother." And I said, "Well, I said we ain't supposed to get on a ship, and <laughs> I'm in a train." He said, "Yeah," but said we'll slip up there and get on it. <laughs> we were, it wasn't too far. We had a little old camping place, and we went up there and got on that train. And when it came in. And, and uh, we couldn't speak English, and them old boys that run that train, they couldn't speak it either. But we went on, they told, uh, the one that told them how to get there, you know, uh, he wasn't on there either, but anyhow, he'd give us the direction and wrote a little old slip and told us to give that to the conductor, and we did. And he took us right to the place. <laughs> What'd you do when you got there? Well, my brother and I, we just talked and stayed in the, where he was at and talked, I think, about a day and, and caught the train back. We, we had fun, fun. And where did you go after that? Let's see. Well, we got our uniforms ready to come back home. I and mean, it wasn't too long until we got on the ship and come back uh -huh. to the States. We had to have everything sewed on, we had everything tore off in our uniform. And we, and we had to have everything sewed on our uniform. And I couldn't sew it, and a short couldn't either. And uh, uh, a lady, a little old lady lived up just, just a few steps from where we was at. We took our a bunch of old uh, canned stuff that we had left over, you know, up there, and our suits and things to, from the fix. And she couldn't speak English. <laughs> we, we couldn't speak it to her. You know, and uh, we showed her what, how we wanted it, you know. And we put that needle like that, you know. And, and about that time, as the one walked with the window there, and there's a boy, and he come in, and he went to talk to his mama, and then he turned to us, and he told us what she said to him about the sewing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it helped out, it helped out a lot. Like. And we watched her sew a while. She, she just, had it up so like that, and then she'd do that needle through that hair. And we asked that 
She asked, oh, what's she doing uh, putting that needle through her? Said she's all in her needle. <laughs> you know, she looked like she's 100 years old. She, she could really use that needle. Boy, she done a good job on it. And where did you arrive when you got back to the States? Where did you arrive when you got back to the States? Atlanta. Yeah, we went back to Atlanta. And did you discharge from there too? Yeah. Oh, no, not, not Atlanta. We, I talked to bus to get to the back end of the bus that comes through there. And what did you do when you discharged? What did you do when you dis discharged? Well, I went to work as a construction work, be on roads. Did your army training help you later on as a construction worker? Well, I'll tell you what, I, I've never been treated any worse in my life than I was when I come home and got a little old job. No, I, I, I farmed a little bit for the first. Then I went to farm a little bit, well, I had I wanted to build me a house, and uh, the guy it was the maintaining the town's county road through the states, you know. And I went out there and asked him. I I said, Clyde, I said, would you happen to have a, a opening for another man? I said, I I want to get on a job and get my I get a little money off of the the government to build a house, and uh, I said, I'd like to sign up and get that and start. He said, well, yeah. I said, you go. It was a gangster and told me where to go to down at the state office. And go in and tell them, tell them your problems. And I said, tell them that I can use you. And uh, I know a little about equipment and stuff like that, too. You know? And I said, I can get a, on a learning how to operate machinery, you know, more. So he did, he picked me up and went to work and I worked about three years for him. And then come election time, the representative of the Senate, two of our men uh, uh, run. One of them got elected, the other got beat. And one we was working for was the one who was elected. I mean, it was, uh, I mean, working in. But this other man beat this one. And he laid their boss man off. And then they started laying us off. Uh, he, laid, he laid every one of us off. Worked on that job. And uh, I told him, I said, I said, I've got fixed up with the government here to build my house. And I said, I, I can't build it without that little check coming in too. And uh, so they, they said, I can't have it. And then they laid me off this, who you, <laughs> you fought for our country or not. But I didn't have no sand, but I could have got back on. Uh, my father-in-law tried to get me to go to, and see the governor. The governor didn't know nothing about this, you know. See the governor and and uh, talk to him about that. And said I'll guarantee you that he'll put you back on. But I didn't do it. I said drill that dirty. I said I, I'll I'll make it somehow. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I'd like to talk some more about your time in Luzon and then the Philippines. Could you tell me what else you remember about some of the combat that was going on there? In the Philippines. Uh huh. Uh. They had a big, in the, in the middle of the, in the middle of where we was at, a big rock wall around a, a several acres there, and big houses, big fine houses. In them, and at a, I forget now, I believe about nine foot high. And wide, you know, where nothing could tear it down. But they bummed her down. And then we had to clean it up. I helped clean that up, you know. <laughs> I was going out through that and pushed down an old house and cutting the corners off. I hit something, a boy, it flowed far, it flowed far for the 
way on out there. And I'll, I laid down that old tractor seat, backed up, <laughs> got out of there. Yeah, and we worked and cleaned that up. Did you have a bulldozer or anything, or did you? Yeah, just... it moved on. And do you have any close calls while you were in the Philippines? Oh yeah. Could you tell me about one? Well, uh, we had uh, 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 one night a a bombing bunch coming out of the plains, you know. And uh, they slipped in just about dark. I mean, you know, we couldn't. And they, they didn't get it just right, but they didn't have, none of us got hardly dug in or anything. And they come in and, and everybody had to take just what cover they could find. And we did, and that boy that slapped me just falling up the side of it and wore out, you know. <laughs> and I'd, I'd say that was a close call. And when uh, when, was, when we was going over the forming the task force to hit the, uh, the Japan, why well, we had the ship they was parked out, loading up in the ocean. And they come in that one eating and bummed us and uh, trying to knock them ships out, you know. And uh, but they had enough planes that. They put them back and uh, went old short, game short. <clears throat> we suppose went down knees, underneath, you know, and get out when they had a braid like that. Man, uh, the, we was on LST and uh, that low, they'd put the trucks on top deck and down the bottom, they'd put tanks and other equipment like that. It was on tracks and uh, but then them, me and James, we rolled up under one of them big trucks that was loaded down with stuff, you know, and, and stayed up there and watched the fight. <laughs> we just laid under the water and shoot them planes down. And uh, what goes now, there was a box loaded with something, I don't know, it was along with some here to the wall there, and uh, about so wide. It fell off of that truck, it, it's so rough, you know what, them was shooting, the water got rough, I mean, you know, them fellas on them ships was shooting, you know, and they'd have to turn around when the plane would start this way, they'd have to turn their ship around to get the gun where they could shoot them. And uh, man, they had the ocean, who we, that rough, you know, and it knocked that sh box off, you know, and it fell right down beside of us. If it hit, they just killed both of us. Did you ever listen to Tokyo Rose while you were in the Pacific? Mm hmm? Did you ever listen to Tokyo Rose while you were in the Pacific? No. Okay. Do you have any funny stories from mm -hmm. your time overseas? Mm hmm. Could you tell me some of the medals that you earned? Well, we, uh, I, I've got I don't know, something of uh, the medal we got. You earned the bronze arrowhead. What medal is that and how did you earn it? Well, I've done some, <laughs> I just don't remember. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, my, <coughs> I ran older, I got, I mean, I, I'm forgetting a lot of things, you know. It's all right, I think you've earned it. <clears throat> Did you have any leaders that inspired you? Mm -hmm. Any leaders that inspired you while you fought in the war? No. <clears throat> what was the uh, scariest moment you ever had overseas? Scariest moment. The what? Uh, the moment you were the most scared. I don't remember. Is there anything that you miss about being in the military? No, I don't. I don't think. Think so. 
Well, were there any other stories that you were looking to tell? Anything that might have slipped your mind? Huh. I well, it's been a real pleasure to get to speak to you today. I'd like to thank you so much for taking the time, but most importantly, I'd like to thank you very much for your service. Well, I, I'm so sorry that I can't remember a lot of this, but my, uh, I'll forget it now. I'll forget names. I won't even know who, what their name is, but I know them by face and can't call their names, you know. I know them all my life, I mean, you know, behind. Don't even worry about it. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you.